Prayer for the 2022 National and Local Elections Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism, Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth, Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud, Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective, Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language, Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather around the table of the Lord, we bring our petitions before Him, and we continue to pray for peace in the whole world, especially in Ukraine and in Russia. And so let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through him, the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now, the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel. 
a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram, I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel, he brought the letter which read, With this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a god with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note, you can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king, Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God, and would move his hand over the spot, and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Parpar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this, he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, Wash and be clean, should you do as he said. So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became clean, like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth, except in Israel. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A thirst in my soul for the living God, when shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God, when I shall go and behold the face of God. As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God, when I shall go and behold the face of God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When I shall go and behold the face of God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God, when I shall go and behold the face of God. Then will I go in the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. 
A thirst is my soul for the living God. When I shall go and behold the face of God, please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to you. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the, peop to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine, famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. If we will look back at our gospel, maybe we could ask, why all the fury? Bakit kaya galit na galit yung mga kababayan ni Jesus sa kanya? Ano bang sinabi niya? Ano bang ginawa niya? If we look again at our gospel, there was only one thing that he said. He stated facts. Sinabi niya lang yung totoo. Pero kung nagsasabi lang siya ng totoo, bakit kaya ganun yung reaksyon ng mga kababayan niya? Sa sobrang galit, nais pa nilang ihulog siya sa bangin. Maybe we could also ask ourselves, how do we receive the truth? How do we accept the truth? And how do we react to the truth? We have often heard that the truth hurts. Masakit tanggapin ang katotohanan. Kapag may umanaw na minamahal at ibinalita yun sa asawa o sa anak, minsan anong narinig natin reaksyon? Humahagulgol, sasabihin nila, hindi totoo yan. O di kaya kapag may nagbalita sa isang kabiyak na nangangaliwa yung kanyang asawa, dahil nakita siyang may ibang kasama sa isang di ka nais-nais na lugar, ano yung sinasabi, ano yung reaksyon nila? Hindi niya kayang gawin yan sa akin. And usually, that is the first reaction that we do when we are confronted by a hard truth. We deny it simply because it is difficult for us to accept it. But what happens if we continue to deny it? Do we grow from it? Or do we get stuck with the past? Maring hindi madaling tanggapin yung katotohanan sa simula, pero kapag nagpatuloy lang tayo na tanggihan at hindi tanggapin yung katotohanan, patuloy lang tayong may iwan sa nakaraan. And that is what happened in our gospel. The people were stuck in the past. And when they were confronted with the truth, They tried to deny it by, throwing off, by, by trying to throw off Jesus off the brow of the hill. Hindi sila makamove on kasi hindi nila tanggap yung katotohanan, yung kanilang kasaysayan. At ano yung kasaysayan nila? That their ancestors were responsible for the death of the prophets. 
yung mga ninuno nila yung nagpapapatay sa mga propeta noong una. And when they heard Jesus speaking, it was as if their history was also being brought up. When Jesus mentioned the prophets Elijah and Elisha, he was merely stating a fact that they did only that he was merely stating a fact that they did only certain wonders to certain people because those prophets were not accepted by their own people. That message was too hard for them. And that is also what happened to Jesus. The people reacted violently because they cannot accept the truth that Jesus preached. And because of that, they were also stuck with their past that they eliminate the prophets that would preach to them. Tayo kaya? How do we react when the truth is preached to us? Do we simply deny it and blindly look at the future without understanding and accepting the past? Ganyan yung mga sinasabi na, move on na lang tayo pero ayaw balikan yung nakaraan at aminin ang kasalanan. Or do we, ang- do we react with anger and hatred? If these are the ways we react, it will be good to ask, do we really understand the facts and the truth that is preached to us? Because if not, then most probably, it is not Jesus whom we are listening to. Please all stand. Jesus was rejected by his own people. In faith, we accept him as our Lord and Savior, and we pray in his name. For every intention, we will say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Conviction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That Christian parents may be strengthened to follow Christ, who is the way and the truth and the life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our Lenten penance may make us more open to God's redeeming love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19, and for those who care for them. May the vaccines and medicines, as well as our concern for each other, help end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead who are in God's company may enjoy everlasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, since none of us come to Jesus unless you draw us to him, make us all one with him, that we may be with you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Please all stand. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor. And so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest, please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that with the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As one family, we call to God our Father. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should, that you should enter, enter under, under my, my roof, but only say the word, the word and, my and my soul, soul shall, be shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May 
May communion in this your sacrament, we pray, O Lord. Bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May your right hand we ask, O Lord, protect this people that makes entreaty to you. Graciously purify them and give them instruction, that finding solace in this life, they may reach the good things to come. Through Amen. Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Sa Cristo, ang in 